The MacBook Air has been out for just over six months, actually been like seven because it took me way too long to make this video. But in that time, you know, you get to really use a product and see what it's really like. When the MacBook Air, the M2 version first came out, like with pretty much every Apple product or really every tech product in general, there were some controversies, there were some things that people weren't sure about. But as time goes on and you actually just use the device, those controversies seem to fade away and the product kind of speaks for itself. And not to say this up front, I've never actually been a MacBook Air user. I've always had a MacBook Pro, but with the M2 Air, this has kind of changed my mind on the line. And I think it's my favorite laptop Apple makes. So I think it's important to kind of categorize how I use this computer. For me, this is kind of a flex device here in the house for me and my wife. Mainly, it's actually my wife's computer, especially in this time that it has been out. She was actually doing a certification for work that involved a lot of online training and courses, and she was using the MacBook Air for that. So it was that kind of work for her combined with my kind of general household things, you know, paying bills, taxes, all that kind of stuff. And I think that kind of straddles the use cases that a lot of people are using this for, whether you're using it for work, whether you're using it at school, or you're just using it for general computing tasks. The MacBook Air is clearly not the MacBook Pro, so it's not meant to do all that intensive stuff, but it's good enough to you know dabble and also do everything else you need. Now, six months isn't really all that long, so you'd expect the laptop to you know be performing as good as it did on day one, or pretty much as good, and well, it does. With this midnight blue color, there was some worry that it would start to chip and you'd see the metal underneath. And while around the charge port, you can kind of see that, it really isn't all that big of a deal. Although the one thing about this particular color that I just, I really don't like, the, the color itself I like, but the fingerprints, man, they, they just really aren't good at all. You touch it once and it is instantly dirty. This is something that people were complaining about back when it first came out. And well, it hasn't gotten any better. It still annoys me and I clean it pretty often. And for day-to-day -day use, the M2 processor inside is plenty powerful and does everything I need. I never felt like it ever slows down or that I have to wait for it. The computer just kind of works. And that's kind of the whole appeal of the, you know, M series chips is that they just kind of work. And so far that's true. Even if, you know, they're not quite as good as maybe the M2 could have been, it's perfectly fine. But where my favorite part of this laptop comes in is the, you know, MacBook Airness of it. So that super thin and light design. For me, I don't really use this when I'm sitting at a table or at a desk. This is like my couch machine. I love lounging with this laptop and getting work done. And because it's so thin and portable, it just makes that a little easier to do. It just feels good to do it, if that makes sense. It's like, it's not hard to do it with a thicker laptop. It just feels better with a thinner one. And I, I don't know, I just like it. But I think equally or even more importantly than that is the battery life. And you know, the M series chip has always been known for having great battery life. And with a thin computer like this, you kind of want that best combo and it gives it to you. I can easily use this throughout the day. Now I've never quantified what the battery life actually is. Like I've never ran tests cause I don't really care all that much, but really this laptop does what I want it to do, which is I pick it up off the charger, use it for as long as I want, put it back on the charger when I'm done and then it's ready for the next session. And I never really think about battery life while I'm actually using it. And that is I think what the MacBook Air does best. It's the battery life combined with the form factor and the power inside. It does all those three things exceptionally well. So overall, I mean, six months in, the MacBook Air is doing exactly what I hoped it would do in the way that I hoped it would do it. And that's kind of all I hoped for from a laptop. But what kind of got me thinking was comparing the MacBook Air to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. For whatever reason, I absolutely love the MacBook Air. When I use the iPad Pro in a similar form factor with the Magic Keyboard case, I don't get that same love from that experience. And on paper, you'd think like they're pretty similar products, right? They both have M-series chips. They're both super thin and light. They both have great battery life. And you know, you should be able to get a very similar experience from either of these. And I've used the iPad Pro extensively and I just never really liked it. And after really spending some time with the MacBook Air, I think I've come to the decision that Apple's dream of making the iPad Pro, you know, a computer laptop replacement, I'm just, I'm just not in for it. Not right now, or at least not in the state that the iPad Pro is in. And you know, this is kind of a tired argument. I mean, we've heard these things before, but Apple really has dropped the ball with the iPad Pro, specifically iPad OS. Because yes, even though the more desktop-like support is getting better and it's the best it's ever been, it certainly isn't what Mac OS is. And you can, for a very similar price, just buy the MacBook Air that does everything already. It's not gonna, you know, get in your way. You know how to use it or I can make the iPad Pro kind of force it into a box that it doesn't really 
want to be in. And what I've realized is for the work that I've been doing more and more lately, I'm not using the touchscreen on the iPad nearly as much as I used to. I mean, I, I still do here and there, but I'm treating it more like a laptop. And I think that's what a lot of people are wanting the iPad to be, is a laptop with a touchscreen from Apple. But if you're not really planning to be on the touchscreen all day or use the Apple Pencil as your main way of using the iPad, and you're planning to keep it in the iPad keyboard case and just use it more of as a laptop, well, for me, it has actually settled the debate. I've been contemplating going back and forth. Do I want to, you know, invest in the iPad? Do I want to just get a laptop? And now that debate is settled until we see something new from Apple on the iPad OS side. For me, the laptop is the way to go right now, unless you absolutely need the touchscreen. But really, I think that's just a testament to how good the MacBook Air is. When I use that computer, it just makes me feel good. Like I'm not stressed, I'm not worried about it not doing what I want it to do. It's just an easy computing experience where I just don't get that on the other side. Hopefully Apple will do things to continue to fix that. I know I'm not alone in this feeling, but it was really made me appreciate the MacBook Air even more. So now that the M2 MacBook Air has been out for a few months, I think the decision of which computer to buy from Apple is a lot easier than maybe it was a few years ago. Right now, if you want just a everyday computer, get the M2 MacBook Air. You are going to be absolutely happy with it. And if you were on the fence of deciding, you know, should I get a laptop or should I get the iPad with its full keyboard experience? I think that answer is now here. The MacBook Air is a better device for those types of tasks. So if you want a strictly tablet experience, go for the iPad, obviously. But if you want a strictly computer experience, the iPad, even though it does have some promise, it just isn't there. And the MacBook Air with M2, it really hit out of the park.